The following program is a SUTV student production. The views expressed are not necessarily those of Salisbury University, the University System of Maryland, its regents, administration, officers, employees, or representatives. Such as Vice President of Student Affairs, Dr. Dane. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. I'm Alexis Gramatis, and this is SUTV. Bratz, Beers, and Bach, all on campus. Last Tuesday, SU's German Club hosted its 45th Oktoberfest at SU. Students had the chance to enjoy traditional German food, live music, games, and even a beer garden. President of the German Club, Katherine Jedlicka, says the event is supposed to help students step out of their comfort zone and experience a new culture. Another festival goer, fifth year Maddie McGinty says, cultural events are important and every student should experience at least one. Well, shifting gears, Seagulls Who Cycle had the chance to come together and participate in another SU's tradition. Last Saturday, Salisbury University hosted its 30th Seagull Century bike ride. SU TV's Arthur Lembo shows us a first-hand account of the event and what it does for our community. This past Saturday was a beautiful day for a bike ride, as hundreds of bikers from across the country participated in the 30th annual Seagull Century bike ride. SCTV spoke to a volunteer leader and president of the Honor Student Association, Austin Dabbs, for more information on how students were participating in the event. The Seagull Century is a huge biking event where they have a bunch of bikers biking to Assateague and back for a grand total of 100 miles, hence the century. Seagull Century has a large draw and attracts new visitors to Salisbury University and the Eastern Shore every year. I flew in from Singapore and I live in California. I've been coming for the last eight years and we come every year in honor of a friend of ours who passed away. I ride in the Malibu Hills all the time so it's kind of a, a completely different kind of riding. 30 miles there is like 100 miles here. Seagull Century is Wicomico County's largest one-day tourism event and averages about 2.5 million dollars in annual impact on the local community. Everyone takes good care of the cities, the towns, it's great. We've had a great time all these years. Yeah, there's a wide range of people, some like pretty competitive cyclers, some not really, and then others that are just here to have fun. So it's, it's a pretty awesome group of people. The event's special because it like, basically consumes half the campus. It's like a huge event, it's really fun. People start bringing their dogs out, people come out just to see. The revenue's huge, it's good for the city of Salisbury, it's good for Salisbury University, and it's good for all the organizations because it trickles down. Bikers hope the event will attract new riders in the years to come. For SCTV, this is Arthur Lembo reporting. Now a portion of the registration money from Seagull Century will fund scholarships and grants here at SU. And it's really starting to feel a little more like fall out there. Let's send it over to Nicholas Butler for a, week at, for a look at the week ahead. Thank you, Alexis. It is really starting to feel like the sweater weather for fall around here in Salisbury. We've had some really cold temperatures the past couple of days, but the highs are still getting up to the mid upper 50s and 60s around here in Salisbury and the rest of the country. If we move here to a local northeast map, we can see that the temperatures have been in the mid 60s to upper 60s for the entire day around here in Salisbury, the DC and the entire um, northeast metro area. If we go to this surface map here, we have the, high, the reason we have such warm temperatures and sunny conditions is this high pressure system that's, been, that's parked all over the East Coast and it's been very warm the past couple of days. And that will continue into Thursday with the high pressure system all over the Eastern United States. And that will continue as well into Friday with another warm pressure system that continues to be stationed over the U.S. here. If we move into our outlook for the next couple of days, we have tonight we'll see lows into the low 40s. Um, tomorrow it will be nice and clear with highs up in the mid 70s. And tomorrow night we'll it will also be clear with lows into the mid 50s. If we look at to our seven day outlook, we'll have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we'll keep this high pressure trend and we'll have very clear skies into the mid 70s for highs into the mid to upper 50s for lows. And moving into Saturday, Sunday and Monday, we'll have some clouds starting to move in as a cold front approaches us Tuesday and the 
conditions will continue to get warmer into the evenings while staying relatively stable during the days. And into next Wednesday, we'll have temperatures into the mid 60s and low 40s as the cold front comes through and brings the temperatures down a little bit. Back to you, Alexis. Well, thank you, Nicholas. I am looking forward to the nice weather for the wine festival this weekend. Well, the United States faced the largest mass shooting in the country's re recent history earlier this month. I sat down with the Assistant Chief of Police, Brian Waller, to discuss safety on SU's campus and how SU police have been trained to handle active shooter situations. There's nothing that can be done, you know, it's 100% foolproof to prevent. Certainly, prevention, those mitigation strategies are, are the best at saving the most lives. I mean, if you can, if you can identify a troubled individual and intervene before they ever start shooting, then no one gets hurt. When that fails, and that fails, but when it does, then you have to have police officers, medical personnel, first responders who know what to do. Remember, we have many precautions on campus to aid students in the event of an emergency, like our blue light system. Well, it takes a special type of person to sell art for 50 years. It takes even more creative one to, to create an Ocean City landmark. SUTV Sean Foy shows us the man behind one of the boardwalk's most colorful, colorful attractions for when you want to relax and get off campus. Artists use many tools to create their art, usually paintbrushes or pencils. Probably On the busy boardwalk of Ocean City, now. hundreds of pieces of art are up for sale at the Ocean Gallery. But the artist behind the counter uses a staple gun as his tool. Joe Carrard opened the gallery half a century ago. He reschedules important life events to be there. He spent his anniversary with his wife at the gallery so he could be the first face to greet customers as they walk in the door. But what started this love for art? What I felt is that art was fun and uh, it was the best thing going in, in elementary school. It was better than lunch, it was better than recess. Um, it was fun and uh, the formal courses weren't. He says he wants art to be relaxing and not formal. So he tries to make the gallery fun for himself and the customers. His co-workers pick up on this mentality. Seizes the day and makes the best out of everything, no matter what the situation is. He's always positive, no matter what. Crow Art uses his tools to make the gallery a staple of Ocean City. The gallery just received a certificate from the state of Maryland for 50 years of business, the first in Ocean City to earn one. The fun is going after something the achievement is great, but I never, never sit on that. <laughs> Crow Art says he will always try to make art fun for customers and those just walking by. In Ocean City, I'm Sean Foy, reporting. Now you can visit the Ocean City Gallery on the boardwalk to get your own piece of art. Well, that's all we have for tonight. Thank you for joining us and have a great night.